What's up guys, welcome to the video. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the new Electron Co. EC4P V2. Um, I decided to order this motor for my new RSF 650 project. Uh, I did a lot of research and this seemed to be the best option. So I'm gonna do a little unboxing and then I'm also gonna explain a little bit about what makes this motor different from the standard uh, MY20 motors like the Conray and Vivo motors. A lot of people think this is the same thing. Uh, it's not, it's actually different. People see the made in China and they think it's made in the same factory or it's just a rebranded MI1020, but it is not that, I assure you. So I'm gonna go ahead and unbox it, show what it looks like and explain a little bit about what makes it different. Before I get into the video, just a little bit of a disclaimer. I am not a electric professional at all, uh, just a hobbyist. And I'm also not paid by Electron Co. This is just my honest choice of what I thought was the best motor and uh, I'm gonna tell y'all what I know about it. So so this is the Electron Co. EC4P. It is a bolt-in motor upgrade solution for uh, the Razer MX500s, MX650, RSF 650, and you can probably make it fit in the uh, 350s as well. I don't really know, but I'm going to be using it for my 72 volt RSF 650 build. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and jump in what makes this special compared to an MY1020 motor of any other type. So first off, you get this beautiful black finish, which I really like. That alone is a good selling point of the motor, but you also have an integrated heatsink with fan mounts. And the V2 actually has much thicker um, end plates or end caps. Um, I know that was, I guess, an error with the first edition of this one. It seems like they should have figured that out before shipping that out, but things have to kind of get tested and they may have just skipped a little bit of that testing time. But yeah, I'm glad I bought it at the time I did because this is the V2. So it should have that issue resolved. I believe the front plate was cracking or the back plate was cracking. Something to that extent for some people. So that's why they had to do that upgrade. But other than that, the build quality looks really nice. You get a bearing seal right here. So this motor's completely sealed um, from the outside. It's also sealed on your cable right here. Some of the fundamental differences with this and the MI1020 motor is that this is gonna be a four pole motor, whereas the Conray motors are three pole. That does make a little bit of difference. A lot of people are online are saying that they notice this motor is way smoother. And that's true based off the polarity because, or the amount of poles, sorry, not polarity. But um, yeah, so the more poles you have, basically it's the amount of increments that the magnets move. So if you have three poles at lower RPM, it's gonna be more coggy and you're gonna feel that a little bit more than if you have four poles. Or for example, a hub motor has 16 poles and that's super smooth movement because those magnets are at such uh, high intervals or there's, there's so many of them around. The ring. I'll put up some diagrams to kind of explain it a little bit better, but um, yeah, this is gonna be a four pole motor that is a three pole motor. Like I said earlier, this is gonna be a direct fit for your Razor chassis. So that's definitely a plus. Uh, there are motors that are better than this. There's QS motors, but you have to do a little bit of fabrication to get them to fit. So I wanted to just be able to drop something in and I think this is the best option for that. So moving to the wiring, you're gonna have thicker wires, thicker phase wires that is compared to um, any of those MI1020 clone motors. You also have a hull sensor with a temperature probe on there. And I think they state that that is the KY, KTY83 temp sensor for any of y'all that need to know that. But yeah, so there's that. And then you have this nice thick uh, orange insulator. I don't love the orange, but I guess that's their signature thing. So another thing that makes this motor stronger is it actually has a larger rotor so the rotor sits a little bit bigger and what that means is it's gonna have more torque because if you think about it, those magnets are further from the center of rotation. So more leverage, more torque on those magnets. So this motor is physically stronger than its MI1020 comparison. I'm not gonna open mine up, but uh, Electron Co. did actually do a video on this. So I'll go ahead and show what it looks like on the inside, but you can see that the rotor in here is much bigger than the MI1020. In addition to being bigger, it has some sort of Kevlar wrap that they've put that holds the magnets on compared to the bands that are on the standard MI1020. I'll show those pictures as well. You can also go watch their video. But all in all, that's gonna make this just a stronger motor. One more factor that's going to set this motor apart from the MI1020 Vivors and Conrays is that you have a super thin lamination on the magnets within the motor, and that's gonna result in higher efficiency. Um, it minimizes eddy current losses, which are currents that result from the magnets spinning around and cause more heat and inefficiency in the system. So you're gonna have a heat sink to evaporate that heat or evacuate that heat. And you're also gonna have the thinner laminations, which will hopefully lower the temperature and uh, increase the efficiency of this motor compared to the other motor that has thicker laminations. 
I am a little bit curious to open this thing up and look inside, but I don't think I'm going to because I don't want to mess anything up. This is a pretty expensive unit. It's going to run you, I think, $320, $330 was their last listed price for this guy. So definitely keep that in mind. It is more expensive than those kind of remotors, but I do believe that the uh, more beefed up internals, the seals, everything is going to result in a much better motor than those cheaper Amazon motors. So you might as well just buy it once and buy it right. But we're going to put that to the test. Um, I'm going to be putting this in my RSF 650 soon. We'll be running it with a 72 volt battery, which I'm also going to do a build video on. And I'll be using a VESC to control this. So I'm not going to be using a far driver, I'm not going to be using a Kelly controller. I really want to see what's up with VESC technology. It's super intriguing to me since it's open source um, and it actually has firmware and a, a tool that works in English. So <laughs> that's a big plus. I'm tired of dealing with Chinese controllers and, and sort of incomplete translations on what parameters do. I really want to be able to understand this stuff and share what I'm able to understand. So I'm going to be moving to that platform, hopefully. And if it works out, the future of my builds will probably be built on the VSC platform. Check out uh, my channel and keep an eye out for a video on that. I will be doing a video reviewing the VSC that I choose. It should be arriving soon. So uh, yeah, keep an eye out for that. And uh, go ahead and subscribe if you're interested in the RSF650 build and stay tuned for my next videos.